Hello, hello, hello. Are we live? Are we live? Hello, hello. Hello, good morning, good evening. Can you hear me? Are we live? I think so. All right, here we go. I think we are live now. Just testing my audio. Okay, I don't hear anything. All right, I do hear something. Okay, I think we are live. Thank you for joining me. Hopefully my audio is okay. Can someone give me a microphone check, please? Microphone check. Picture looks so dark. I think my uh, microphone's good. Okay. <coughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's live stream. Thank you for joining me. My name is Chris Legospi. Today we're going to talk about graphite drawing. I'm going to show you my graphite drawing process. Thank you for being here. Thank you for the microphone check. Here is uh, just a little, ex uh, little example of, um, of a uh, graphite drawing. I'm trying to find my pencil. Here we go. And uh, this is done in uh, just an ordinary... Uh, plain paper sketchbook, so it's got a bit of strange looking texture, but yeah, I, I like it, it still works, and so we're kind of going to go over that today. Thank you for being here, wherever you are. Uh, before we begin, I uh, just wanted to uh, um, before we begin, if you haven't already, Make sure to subscribe to my free Insiders Club email list. If you like uh, my work, if you like uh, some of the videos you may have seen on YouTube, and you want more lessons and downloads and content, I have a lot of free head drawing lessons, drawing lessons, color, uh, and other free resources on my website. So go to www.drawwithchris.com, and there you can enter your email and you'll be good to go. You can also see some of the downloads available um, on the downloads page. So www.drawwoodchris.com. So thank you for being here wherever you are. And before we begin, comment below, where are you located? Where are you watching from and what time is it for you? <clears throat> I'm currently in Thailand myself. It's Monday morning for me. Monday morning, this is perfect. And uh, so let's begin. Sorry about that. Um, let's see. One second. So I just want to quickly go over the, uh, the thinking part, the process part. And I'm going to use a little graphite, um, graphite on, um, um, what is this? This is Bristol. So the paper does help quite a bit. Obviously, the smoother the paper, the better. If you want smooth tones, 
So I'm going to try to, you know, I want to get some smoother tones on this one. That's probably what you're most interested in. And um, really, there's two things that um, are very important for me. Besides having a good pencil sharpener is um, value shapes and limited values. They're kind of the same thing. And two, uh, gradients. So value shape, what does that mean? Well, when you have, um, let's see, value shape. So this is a kind of simplified idea of what, what we're doing here. So value shapes, so if we have a um, something we want to draw, in this case it's a face, portrait, right? And you look at your reference, you look at your model, you want to have the ability to see this. You want to be able to look at whatever you're drawing and kind of simplify the values in your mind's eye. This is a Photoshop version. I just quickly did a little Photoshop filter. So you can see what I mean by value shapes. So you want to be able to look at this, look at whatever you want to draw, and see this. This has four values, which is quite helpful. Five is probably the most I will go. I per personally like three. Three was, is more of a dramatic sort of value system. But this one kind of has, has that. It has a very nice, um, somewhat uh, academic form light, basically one big bright light source. So that's really helpful. This is a bit of an easier or simpler value system, lighting scenario to handle because this kind of lighting produces, readily, more easily produces simple value shapes. How do we do that? One thing I do is um, I practice um, these little swatches. So this is like a five value little swatch thingy. Swatch is a, it's a little square. It's a little, little tile, a little square, a little piece of something. So this is a swatch of value. You can see this one is a little too bright, too dark. And this one's a little too bright, dark. Bright, not dark enough. <laughs> so you see, when I um, prepare to do a drawing, sometimes I'll do these little swatches, or sometimes they're called scales. Just like a musician practices notes, this is how an artist practices his value, is with little scales. So these are notes of value, shapes of value. So you practice... When you draw, you go, okay, how many values do I need? How many values do I want? How simple can I make it? Because the less you have, the easier your life will be. The more you have, the more difficult your life will be. But sometimes you need more to get a bit more of a realistic form turn, or if you have a complex lighting. Uh, this lighting, like I mentioned, is very simple. If you're drawing from a more complicated lighting system, three lights, two lights, three lights, four lights, rim lights, multiple lights, ambient light. Ambient light is like the generic light of the room. If you're drawing a complex lighting system like that, you're going to need more values because um, 
the values will be so close together that in order f to get the proper turn, right, we want, we want, you know, we want the, the plane to turn. If you want, m you know, more dramatic plane changes or more subtle plane changes or more complex plane changes, right, you're going to need more values to create the illusion of plane changes. So that's part of something to think about. You want to look at what, whatever you're drawing or whatever you're setting up, if you're photographing or model, and understand that your lighting will create or will have uh, whatever lighting you use will determine how many value shapes you can or will need to use. So this one is quite a simple academic light almost. And then um, it has, so this way I can, I know I can pretty much limit myself to three or four. So I will go with four, just to add a little bit more sophistication. And um, so that's something to think about. Make sure everything that you draw, you want to group them into very simple values. And um, it's very fun practice to do. You can start with three, like this. And right now I'm using a very hard graphite pencil. So it's not going to get that dark. That's a HB, I believe. So now I'm going to use a B. And there you go. So you practice three, you go, okay, well, what if I want to do a little bit more complex? So let's practice four. Let's practice four. So as you develop your uh, develop your eye, your ability to see, that's step one. Step one is the ability to see correctly. And then step two is the, abil is the ability to execute. Okay. And obviously, then you take a look and go, oh, how are my scales doing? So this one is not quite as, as, as pretty as I like, right? It doesn't quite feel like four distinct value shapes. So I need to, I need to keep working. Maybe switch to a lighter graph, a harder graphite. Go from, uh, you know, a, a B to an HB, or vice versa. Here I'm using what's what is this? This is a six B, so it's, it's pretty dark. And there's even softer graphites than this, so that that's looking pretty good. It's better. So you just keep practicing until you get really pretty scales. If you want to make beautiful music. I think this is graphite also. It's got, see, it's got that misty glow. Yeah, this is graphite, I think. I forget, sorry. This is some graphite. Sorry here. <laughs> oh my God. I haven't opened the sketchbook in a long time. Anyway, here we go. If you want to make beautiful music, you got to practice your scales. I hope that makes sense. You gotta, you gotta have good scales, good notes to make good music. As artists, we need good value shapes to make good realistic drawings. Does that make sense? So this is where you earn the money, <laughs> is what I always say. You want good drawings, you gotta train your eye to see the world this way, and then you gotta train your hand to make beautiful, to execute the correct value shapes that you need. Does that make sense? So that's a very simplistic explanation, but that's the secret. I just gave you the secret sauce to make beautiful drawings. Is training your eye and training your hand. Is that simple? <laughs> All right, guys, thank you for joining me in today's stream. Have a nice day. No, I'm kidding, there's more, there's more. <laughs> Let's go back.
two gradients. <clears throat> and uh, this is a good uh, moment to pause here. So uh, any video editor watching this, make sure you cut this out. Okay, let me um, just quickly take a look at your comments here. Thank you for all the wonderful comments. Uh, hello, Frank, David, Frankie, bad habit, hello. Frankie bought my book. Thank you, Frankie. It's a wonderful book. It's available in multiple languages now, I believe. David says, microphone sounds clear. Thank you for the mic check. Greg Parler, hello. Greg Parler is uh, uh, making big strides in his uh, portraits and commissions work, actually earning good money. Greg, Greg, and he's my coaching, he's in my coaching program, so shout out to my coaching program. You guys want to make some good money? Uh, you come talk to me. <laughs> uh, Sean Phillips, hello, from Omaha. Wow, I believe he's the first Omaha, Nebraska. Claudia from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Hello, ciao. And Mr. Elenin from Mexico. And Corey and Aaron, welcome, welcome. All right, let's talk about... <clears throat> All right, let's talk about gradients. So we got value shapes, we got gradients. So in a way, we kind of did gradients here. So this is a gradient using scales, but really gradient is going from A to B. A to B, A being something light, B being something darker, that's it. A to B. So how do we get there, <laughs> right? If, we, if we're at A and we want to get to B, we need a gradient. It's that simple. All right. And that's all for today, guys. Thank you so much for <laughs> joining me on today's stream. Um, please sign up for my newsletter. <laughs> no, no, there's more. There's more. Okay. So really, a gradient is A to B. We need to get from a lighter thing to a darker thing or vice versa. We, of course, we can go the opposite way. Let's talk about light to dark. Now, there are three ways to get there, all right? Um, basically, basically, <laughs> basic. There are three basic ways to get there. One, you want to get A to B. One way is with the point. The point, the point of your pencil, and this is called hatching. We all know hatching. Right? This way we use the line of the pencil. And if we use a really light pencil, we can go in this zone, right? If this is a B. Oh, and this is HB. So this is a hard graphite. So we can use the point very lightly and combine it with a light touch. We can use the point to get into this zone. So that's the advantage of using hatching or line, or the point, the point of the pencil, the point. You see how I'm old holding it? The point. Uh, so that's great. When we get into these zones, the point becomes less efficient, obviously, because now we're kind of digging into the paper, so we don't want to do that. Even if we use a harder pencil, or softer, like a B, a 6B in this case, we can still use the point, but then um, I personally don't like to press too hard because I like to keep things on the surface. If I press too hard, it makes a groove in the paper, and I don't always want that. So that's using the point. The next way is to use the side. The side, of course, the side. See now, you see I changed my grip, and I use the side. So we need a longer lead for this. So um, if you don't have a sharpener that makes a long lead, you have to make the lead yourself with a good old-fashioned razor blade. And we use the side. And you see the side is great because it has nice coverage. Right, I can fill a bigger area. Made a little smudgy there. And 
notice the quality of the tone. It's, a, it's smoother than this, right? Here you can see the stroke. Here the stroke is fairly hidden. And this is especially nice if you have smooth, smooth paper. So I'm using hot press smooth Bristol. So this is very smooth paper. It's very nice paper. So that's the side, okay? And then the final way is, um, I, I don't know um, what to call this. Um, I, for lack of a better word, I'll call it wipe, wipe. Wipe, tissue, airbrush effect, smudge. Smudge is when you take your finger and do that. It's basically, um, and I'm going to use a, I'm going to use uh, sandpaper here. Oops. So this is a very soft graphite. I'm going to use a bit of sandpaper just to demonstrate what's happening here. Some sandpaper. I don't have graphite powder right now. Normally, um, I would. I like graphite powder and charcoal powder a lot. This is how you make powder, obviously, if you don't have your own powder. Those of you who um, live outside of the U.S. or Europe, you may have a hard time buying powder. Uh, I've been outside of the U.S. for a while now, and I haven't seen any. So, and tissue or your finger, but I like tissue, obviously. So it gets a bit out of control, but that's okay because then we get some happy accidents. We get some, that's quite messy. <laughs> and then we have to come back in with the eraser, obviously. And then we work back into it. So that is a wipe. And you can see I don't have a lot of control, obviously, right? You see these? We use, um, we, have, we have a lot of control. We can stay, I can stay within the boundary. Here, almost no control, but um, I would argue you kind of want that. You want that because, number one, it, you don't use this for the fine drawing, obviously. You don't use this when you're ready to finish, like the eye or whatever. You use this in the beginning. When you want to get a nice, smooth tone, you use wipe techniques, or maybe at the end, when you want to wipe out, when you want to wipe out a light, you use this at the end to go backwards. And you could do the wipe with your, uh, with your kneaded eraser. You could shape it to kind of make a wipe like that. Now, if you want to do wipes or airbrushy look, whatever you want to call it, and you want a bit more control, What I would do is um, so this is a very soft graphite here. I'm using the side just to get some tone on the paper. And then you use a stump. And the stump is basically a tissue, but in a stick form. It's, it's, the same, it's the same thing. It's tissue paper. And then you do this. And that is pretty much it. So you see that the tone is even smoother than this. And um, I'm not doing it too careful, so it's kind of, it's kind of, kind of sloppy, but... Um, you, you, may, you may want that. And this is nice, too, because what it does is all these, both of these, I like because of uh, accidents. And at artists, we call them happy accidents. When, when, they, when they work well, we call them happy accidents. When they make our drawing worse, we get pissed off and we say, Oh, why did I do that? <laughs> <laughs> that was a terrible that was a terrible mark. What did I do that? So we, we want happy accidents. But what, what I'm saying is that um, f 
for, for me, I, um, I like to create um, a tight, clean world. I like to create a tight framework and then, and then make a lot of accidents. I hope that makes sense. So we'll, we'll see that. So anyway, that is a very, very brief explanation of the process. I'm making value, I'm looking for value shapes. I'm making good value, I'm filling in my value shapes that I want with logical, clean, progressive tones. And these, this is the mechanics of how I'm gonna do it. I basically either do hatching, do the side, or do some kind of tissueing, wiping, softy thing. <laughs> and then I do both. And then I use the eraser too. And then, you know, the eraser, we go backwards. So that's a whole other topic is using erasers. So that's about it, my friends. Let's get started. We don't got too much time today. Um, <laughs> thank you for joining me. Maybe um, we'll, we'll conclude this in another video. Um, that might be helpful. I really appreciate you being here. Let me put on the little reference here. So remember, we're sitting down to draw now. Oops, that's not what I want. And I want this, right? This is what I'm after. Uh, this is what I see. I'm drawing a face. I'm going to create the illusion of realism and of full value. But really, the, 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 the process, the mechanics, the mental process is, um, is the image on the right, value shapes. So that's what I'm thinking. Now we're going to execute a little bit here. Um, so what I'm going to do, and this is not graphite, it's actually colored pencil. What I'm going to do is I'm going to lock in my drawing a little bit with colored pencil. Um, because this one has some clear value shapes, uh, which makes my life easier, I'm going to basically do a line art drawing. You know, this is just this is just how uh, I work, and uh, it's it's uh, a look that I like. You know, I like uh, a slightly illustrative, leaning look. You know what I mean? That's what I do for. For work here, you know, the movie poster thing, I like that look, so that's kind of what I'm after. If you want a more academic look, you probably, academic meaning like the realistic look, maybe you won't want to do this step. And uh, the wax will uh, resist more of the wiping, because uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a big wipe in the beginning and then tighten as I go. And that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it right there. So this is uh, basically uh, how I do uh, movie poster comps. Those of you who um, are new, um, I currently do movie poster concept sketches and designs, things, illustrations. And um, uh, this is exactly how I do it, <laughs> is exactly. So if you like that stuff, this is exactly how I do it with the, with the little line drawing in um, colored pencil. This colored pencil is uh, very thin, which is uh, very, uh, it's a hard colored pencil, so it produces a nice subtle edge. It's, it's equivalent to, I would say, like an HB. A graphite HB is very hard, so the line is very light and subtle. And... Um, this this will make sense in in a moment. Why I'm doing colored pencil first. 
because I like to do a process of, uh, um, I'm kind of like a sculptor. I do additive and subtractive, meaning I, uh, I put some tone down, I, s I move it around, I manipulate it, and then I, um, and then I, I, I wipe down my work, and then I, I, I repeat the process. And you'll, you'll see what I mean by that. So it's a bit additive and subtractive. And um, I think that's all I wanted to save here. Let me. The hair I don't really need to uh, lock in. I have some. But let's just do it anyway. So if you just joined me, uh, we're doing a little graphite process here. Um, we earlier we talked about um, my uh, thought process and some of the techniques. So you definitely want to review that if you missed the earlier section. Okay. Um, ch -ch 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 -ch. So right now we have an uh, overall light, uh, kind of an eggy kind of light. So now it's actually, um, well, let's, let's quickly examine what we have. So one of the things I do before I start to execute is I, I think, I think, what, what, what is the plan? So I think. What am I doing? What's the plan? What's the look I want? Do I want like a, a Drew Struzan movie poster look or Mike Butkus look? Do I want uh, a Norman Rockwell sort of hybrid illustration realism look? Do I want a uh, traditional academic drawing look like a Barg? Do I want a hyper realist look? Maybe like a Jacob Collins, American realist, you know? So kind of think the, the, what the end product, because um, that helps to have a clear vision of what I want. So I, I, when I sat down, I already had a clear vision for what I want. It's sort of this hybrid uh, academic illustrative look that I like to do a lot. <laughs> it's kind of my own kind of look, whatever. Um, um, but I, uh, uh, yeah. I want, I, want, I want to have clear shapes and marks like an illustrator, but I want to have the smooth tone of an academic realist, if possible. That actually takes, uh, takes some skill. So we're going to do that now. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to overall wipe down with some tone just to kind of get rid of the white. But I want to make sure that I'm aware of the game plan. And really, the game plan is egg. I know you've probably heard that so many times. You're probably sick of it. The game plan is egg. Is egg. Because if you look at the, the model, she has a clear egg highlight right at the top middle. So that's my thinking is egg. And it's partially why I chose this reference, because the lighting scheme is so simple. So that's really my game plan for what I'm going to do next, which is this sort of this nebulous blob of tone. Um, and I normally would do this with charcoal powder, uh, graphite powder, <laughs> with some kind of powder, which I don't have. Maybe anybody watching in Asia, if you know where I can buy some powder, I haven't thought of any. So I got to make powder, you know what I mean? But um, this is not that fun, actually. I like having powder. Anybody watching, if you're a fan of my work, you want to support my work? 
hook me up with some graphite powder or charcoal powder. <laughs> Maybe I, I got to order some. I know um, Jerry's, Jerry's Artorama in the U.S. Jerry's is a big uh, art store company in America. They ship to Asia. So this kind of makes me nervous because it's kind of spotty and it will it will make spotty tone, which I don't want. Or I, I may want, right? Remember accident. If the accident looks good, we call it happy accident. If the accident looks bad, we get angry and pissed off. <laughs> and we want to throw our drawing away. Ah. Maybe I'll just do it this way. Ah, let me. This is too slow. I don't like this. Okay, here we go. Oh, it looks okay. See, that's a good accident. There you go. <laughs> Happy accident, sort of. Oh, it looks pretty nice. Yeah, I'm okay with that. See, it's just giving me an overall wash of tone. And notice, uh, I'm trying to maintain a little gradient. There's an accident in the hair. You see that little smudgy blob? I, I, don't, I don't know how I feel about that yet, but I can easily take it away, hopefully. See, that's, see that? that? That kind of scares me. If that was on the face, I would be kind of, I would be kind of mad. So that's uh, another thing to think about is craftsmanship, how carefully you make your marks, apply your tones and things. Okay, so that's pretty good, right? I, I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that for my first uh, sort of wipe. Um, now I'm gonna, <laughs> now I'm gonna reestablish my drawing. Remember I said um, the way that I work is I, I, I add and then I take away. So I added a clean line drawing and now it's almost gone. <laughs> so <laughs> so I gotta, now I gotta find the line drawing again. And that is basically how I go to the finish. I make a little mark and then I kind of wipe it, move it, manipulate it. And then I reestablish a drawing, take the drawing away, reestablish the drawing, take it away. And then that's, 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 that's how it works, basically. So anyway, let's, let's, get, <laughs> let's get back to work here. I know we're kind of running short on time here. Maybe we'll uh, finish this up in another video. But at least what I can do is establish the drawings and establish light and shadow. So maybe in another video, we'll actually go through the, the finish of this particular drawing. If you guys want to see that, comment below if you want to see that. That part will be not as exciting <laughs> as, um, as this because, you know, if you watch rendering demos, they're always very sl slow and there's not, they don't, you know, there's not a lot of action in a rendering demo. It's not that much fun to watch. Maybe you just want to hear me talk about art. That's, that's cool. And you see, as I'm reestablishing my drawing here, and now this is pure graphite, Notice the colored pencil was very helpful. You see how the colored pencil is, is still a little bit there? And the colored pencil, I could totally erase it if I needed to. And notice as I draw, I'm really still basically drawing outlines. I'm basically drawing shape, right? And I'm basically drawing outlines. So as I draw, yes, I want an egg, but I'm doing this. You see what I mean? You see what I mean? That's what I'm doing. I'm doing this. So um, I'm not rendering, I'm not modeling. I'm re-establishing the shape. That's all I'm thinking. I need the shape back. So, uh, because once I had the shape back, then I could fill it in <laughs> again. And fill it in, wipe it, and then bring it back. And then that's... 
Yeah, it's <laughs> philosophically, it's a very strange way to work. I don't know. I've been thinking about it a lot lately. Um, but that's just how I've been drawing since I was a kid. And then um, when I took a, a sculpture class, one of my teachers in high school, he said, oh, Chris, you kind of draw like a sculptor. Uh, and, I, and I said, what, what do you mean? Well, you know, sculptors, they do what's called additive or subtractive. I said, what's that? Well, you either add the clay or you take it away, right? You carve out, you carve out the wood or you add the clay. You carve out the marble or you add um, whatever. <laughs> so you either add or take away. So this is, uh, uh, yeah, is both. And um, it, anyway, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's just a, a way to work. It's not the only way. And you see it's because I'm doing this uh, very clear shape drawing method or thinking or process, it's starting to get that movie poster illustrative look back, which is what I want. I want, I want that uh, look. So it's important in the beginning to uh, to be very clear on the look you want. It's part of the game plan. And if you're not clear, you know, then you got to do some do some homework. Go out there, uh, look at some beautiful art. You know, go 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 back in time as far as you can. Uh, you know, go back to old masters, uh, 19th century, things like that, and then that will, um, okay, so, and then do some master copies. Now, as I do the hair, the hair has some fairly dark shapes that group nicely with the darks in the in the model's face, the value. So I can, um, her hair is actually quite dark. It's like a blonde hair, light brown hair, dirty blonde hair, but it's uh, value-wise, it's quite dark, at least in this photo. All right, I got some shapes. Now we got to fill them in. And there's a couple ways to do that, obviously. We got to think about the right grade of pencil. I like 2B a lot. 2B is like my, what is this? I have a 2B. And 
and I'm going to um, fill in this shape and I'm going to use side. Remember? Remember, we can use point, side, or some kind of tissue wipey thingy. And uh, that's what I'm doing now. And remember, value shapes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to establish this guy, the middle. Right now, we kind of in, in this, this range kind of now, the light halftone range. So I'm going to establish the midtone now. That's not a good midtone, but I'm going to drop it in with this guy. So that means I can still go darker once I do this pass. So here we go. And my goal is to make a very smooth and even tone. It's kind of like what I did under the nose already. Okay, there's some dirt there. That is poor craftsmanship. I'm not happy with that. See that little nugget? That's probably a little bit of graphite that was on my pencil lead. So this is something, uh, this is a craftsmanship issue. I have to make sure my tools are clean. So that, if that was on the face, I would be quite angry. <laughs> but, um, so, that's, I just got to, I could still erase it, obviously, but um, I like to have a bit more of an alla prima approach. So I got to wipe. Because, you know, when you put down little bit specks of graphite or on your lid, and then you put them down, and then you get these ugly smudges you may not want. So it's better to have, you know, uh, to have more control, obviously, of what you're doing. You see how nice that tone looks? Because I wiped the thing. So that's a good practice. I'm going to wipe my edge. Just good craftsmanship, good discipline. That's part of making, oops, see that little, little nuggets there? I don't know what that is. That's part of being a, a fine artist, if you say, if you will. So now I have a bit of a choice. Do I want to um, maintain this sort of illustrative chiseled shape look? Or do I kind of want to blend what I do more? Um, I'm going to do a little bit of both. What I want is I want this tone to kind of establish sort of the mid tony parts of the drawing in the areas that I want, like the eyes. Because basically the eyes are inside a hole, so I want to make sure they stay nice and dark. And of course, I'm use I want a bit more control. I want a bit more of a tighter illustrative look. So I'm going to use a stump, and then uh, do the same thing on the nose. Just kind of help me soften the core shadow, because eventually I need the core shadow to turn. In this case, I'm going to soften the lips. The lips are um, very easy to make too hard. That's a very common mistake I see. And I used to do it quite a lot myself. Make the edges of the lips really hard because they appear hard. They're high contrast, so they appear hard. But in reality, they're not that hard in real life. Sorry, I have to blow some. There's like little specks of graphite on the surface here. I gotta control that. I 
this is kind of nice. It maintains that that hatching look. I like this look. Probably if you're watching this video, you like my drawings. You know I do this <laughs> a lot. Uh, I just uh, it just looks cool. There's no other reason I do it because it's fun and it looks cool and it's kind of expressive. Sometimes when I draw and I have a bad day, you know, the the hatching is uh, is therapy. <laughs> Maybe that's why uh, my drawings um, people like my drawings because they can feel the emotion, obviously. Okay, <clears throat> so um, we got a nice base. And I think um, we're almost at a good stopping point here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to establish a dark and establish a light. And then, um, and then that's, that's the next step. And then the, uh, after that, we got to keep, keep going. But what I really want to know is how light I can go, how dark I can go. So now I'm going to do something which I should have did in the beginning, which is a scale. I should have did this earlier. Uh, where am I going to put it? Maybe I'll put it here. I need to put my scale up somewhere. Let's put it here so we can all see it. Shit. Draw my scale. I should have did this in the beginning. Sorry, guys. So what I want is a five-value system. Um, where's my HB? Where's my HB, man? HB. Ah, here we go. This is a really hard pencil, actually. Oh, I just sharpened it, so I got to make sure to clean out the smudgies. So I, I, I should have did this before I did the drawing, actually, but it's, it's perfectly fine now. And what this does, this will help me, this will help keep me, um, keep my value shapes really tight. Because it'll show me what I'm putting down is what I'm putting down um, a good solid value. Let's get the 2B here. So really, um, this is something great to do before it. every long drawing, in my opinion. And, um, I want to do more of this because scales is where you really tr train your eye and your hand to work together. If you can do a good scale, you can execute on your drawing much more clearly. Okay, that's a pretty good scale. So what this does it tells me, all right, obviously, I can only go as bright as the paper unless I want to add acrylic paint, which I don't want to. So that's as bright as I can go. Right now, we're here. How dark can I go? That's as dark as I'm going to go. So what I need to do is put this on my drawing and then put this on my drawing. And then we bring <laughs> everything together. And then we worry about the middle stuff later. Okay, so I'm going to do this now. I'm going to take a 6B, and I want to put this somewhere. Uh, where should I put it? Uh, well, where should I put it? It's up to you. Let's look at the model. What's light? What's dark? What's light? What's dark? So this is a, this is a, just a quick Photoshop filter on the right. It's not 100% accurate, and I don't have to follow this exactly. It's just, again, it's just an example of value shapes. So clearly her eyes, the nose, the shadow under her neck, some shadows in her hair, those are the darkest things. I don't have to do that. I can design my own dark accent if I want. Um, 
for sure, I'm going to do the eyes, nose, and mouth. And I'm going to frame her face. So I like that. Let's do that. And the underside of her hair. So that's my plan. So eyes, nose, mouth, underside of, under planes of the hair. Let's do that. Um, so I got to be careful, though. Got to be careful because um, although this is graphite, I can erase this mark. I really don't want to. So I, philosophically, I approach drawing like a la prima oil painting. I try to get it right the first time. It's not, I, of course, I don't always <laughs> succeed, but it, um, it gets me to respect what I'm doing and to help me create the look that I want. I want that effortless look. Of course, we all want that, that effortless sergeant look <laughs> that, oh, it just kind of popped out. It just kind of, oh, it's just magic. And part of the way I do that is I try to get, um, to make each mark the last, the first and last, uh, which is just, it's a philosophical thing. Like I said, I don't always succeed, but I know when I do succeed, it looks awesome because, <laughs> uh, you know, I do want that effortless look. And, uh, but graphite is very, very forgiving, obviously. That's probably why uh, you like it. That's one thing I use it for, is when I, when I know that I'm doing something that will take a bit more erasing, more mistakes, more sculpting, if you will, then I know graphite is, is great for that. So really what I'm doing now is looking at the dark shape. I'm not saying, oh, oh, I got to draw the perfect eye. I got to draw the perfect eyebrow. Nope. I'm looking at, is my shape correct? Is my shape correct? Meaning, does the shape read? Is the shape clear? Does the shape communicate what I want it to communicate? Does it communicate eyelid? Does it communicate pupil? Does it communicate a uh, plane change? Whatever. I don't really care right now about um, detail, although it looks, I am drawing small shapes. So technically it is a detail, but um, what's important to me is the value, is the shape and its value. Third is its quality. So my execution, the quality of my tone, my cra draft craftsmanship, no, oh, and draftsmanship, the craftsmanship, the care I put into the tone, and my skill to execute the tone, the tone shape. Um, so really, this is a very, very uh, uh, um, analytical, logical, scientific, it's a bit of a scientific kind of drawing right now. <laughs> and I'm not, there's, there's a nice, really pretty hard edge on this lower lip. I don't want to dig into the paper yet, carve it out and really establish hard and soft edges yet, uh, but I will. Okay, so this kind of gives me what I'm looking for in terms of a dark shape. Oh, God, a little smudgy there, but that's okay. I'm going to use that. And I'm going to soften. This area is curved, so I'm just going to soften this area, but underneath is cast shadow. I'm going to soften the brow a little bit just to kind of smudge it around because like, like the mouth, it's easy to make the eyes way too sharp, way too hard because we, we think 
that there sh the edge is harder than it really is, but it's not. It's optical illusion. It's just that your perception of the eyes and mouth is that it's so important, which it, which it is psychologically to human beings. The eyes are so important to us so that we put a lot of contrast in things. We see things that are important to us differently than, than other things, obviously. So things that are important to us, we see them with very sharp contrast. So it's a perception thing, but that's not really how light works. And the... Um, your eyes and your lips are in constant motion, actually. Your, your eyes are always blinking. Your eyes are always um, moving around, left to right, up and down, whatever. And your lips are always in subtle movement. So therefore, they need to be a lot softer than what we perceive them to be. So that's, that's something you always have to think about. Okay, so um, I'm still, I'm still going to um, go darker. I can still go darker. I just want to um, let me do this. This is, woo, it's very cool. I like <laughs> using tissue wipes a lot. Okay, so um, we're almost done here. Let's briefly talk about erasing technique. How oh, my erasers here? Come so hard now. We gotta crack open this brand new needed eraser. This company is not that good. This is some company uh, in Thailand. Uh, it's an import. It's, it's not. It's not as good as like the uh, Faber Castell needed eraser. So the shape is important. Obviously, this will create a blocky shape, which I may not want, which may be difficult to recover from. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to squish it and. Try to make it a bit of a rounder, softer. I kind of want to create like a little ball, almost a little bubble, a little bubble shape. And then um, here we go. Let's see. What I'm going to do is pick out the light, right? I want, I want this back. And there's so many ways. You see me just dabbing. I could do circular wipe. It's just one way to do it. That's pretty much it, actually. <laughs> uh, obviously, there's her nose, too, which um, I'm just going to do it now. I would do the nose later, but let's do it now. Little little specks under her eye. Okay, so this erasing is kind of cool. It's working. Erasing has a bit of a happy accident potential too, because the shape you're gonna erase with has a big effect on it. Now I've created a pretty hard edge. I may not want that. If, I, if I'm trying to get a more academic look, I may not want that really hard edge. So I'm going to try to soften it. It's better. And of course, I can always bring some tone back. There you go. There you go. See, it's back nice and soft again. 
And that is pretty much it, my friends. That is pretty much it for sort of this block-in. This is, I guess, is a good block-in. So this is a good stopping point here. And um, I have my dark established somewhat. I have my brightest bright established. And um, that's really it. We just got to bring everything in the middle now. And that's, that is, that's, you know, that's, that's the part where we just kind of sit back and enjoy, enjoy the process of drawing. And um, that's all we can do. All we can do. So I hope uh, I hope you got some um, useful um, ideas here today. I appreciate you joining me. Um, what I'm going to do now is uh, we're going to stop here. And uh, if you guys want to watch maybe the finishing part, we can do that in another video. And uh, thank you for joining me here. I'm going to quickly read your comments before we go. We, before we sign out today. And we have Corey here. Hello, Corey. Corey's also in my coaching program. Thank you. Greg here. Srujan says, how can we generate the image for value shapes? Uh, Photoshop. Aaron says, I just started getting serious in the drawing portrait and I had difficulty times shading. Thank you. This is helpful. Yeah, shading's hard. And this is just one way to do it. There's so many ways to do it. Are you using the side of the colored pencil? Uh, no. Hello. It's <laughs> an interesting name. Sean Phillips. Aaron says, we want to see. Mr. Elian says, totally. Thank you. Corey says, be careful not to touch your paper too much before applying graphite powder. You'll get those dark spots. Yeah. So that is... Um, is... Uh, craftsmanship. Corey's talking about here, so you gotta be really careful. Mr. Elian says, this reminds me of Burt Umber. Exactly, yes. Make it look easy. Thank you, Claudio and Desh Art. Thank you for the amazing content. You're welcome. Thank you for joining me. And Rakesh says, hello. All right, guys, I appreciate you. We're gonna get out of here. Um, and that's all for today. Make sure to... Um, If you haven't already, make sure to uh, subscribe to my email insiders list so you can get more live stream lessons like this and handouts and things. I'm going to release a few new handouts. And you can also get access to some of my new courses coming up this year. I will be releasing them to my email subscribers first before I release them publicly. So thank you for joining me today. Have a great day, and I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.